Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back. Today, I am going to share with you a variety of things. We've got skincare, makeup, a little bit of luxury, and a little bit of home stuff as well. These are things that I have used over the years, and they're like my ride or die items. Now, I've seen a few of these videos go around YouTube over the past few years. I know my favorite YouTuber here, Michelle Wong, has done one. And I think it's also inspired from another YouTuber. So I'm not the one that's coming up with this. And yeah, forgive me because I don't know who started it. But I think I'm going to make it like a little tag and get some of my favorite YouTubers to also share because it's great to hear stuff that we use over and over again. And we would totally run out and buy them again because they form a big part of our routine making us look pretty, making us feel good. So yeah, these are my ride or die items and yeah, I've got so many things so let's just get straight into it. I'm gonna start off with skincare, then makeup, then talk about my household items and then finish off with some luxury items. Don't have a lot of luxury ride or die items and I'm not surprised by that. But yeah, let's start off with skincare. The first thing that is my ride or die, and I've used this for years and years and years, is the Polar's Choice 2% BHA Liquid Exfoliant. This has salicylic acid. I have very dehydrated, dry skin. However, I still, I guess from my younger, well, my, from my youth, I always had combination skin. So I do have like, you know, blackheads, open pores. This helps me keep my skin refreshed and it kind of clears up any kind of gunk on my face. Tried and tested, I don't know how many umpteen bottles I have used. I've been on YouTube so long, I'm pretty sure this has appeared in several of my favorites and several of my empties as well. I should have started off with the facial wash first. But in any case, the Neutrogena Oil-Free Acne Wash with 2% salicylic acid. I use this on most mornings. On the mornings that I don't use this, is usually my skin feels really, really dry or I have flaky, flaky skin, then this is kind of drying. But I use this for years now. I don't know how many bottles, just like the Polar Choice. I love how this kind of keeps my skin really, really clean and clear. And the 2% salicylic acid, it doesn't hang on the skin for too long. Now, I always have a caveat for this because if you have very dry skin, you will not like this. But if you have oily skin or you have like my kind of skin, it's kind of combination or maybe a little dehydrated, I do think you would enjoy this. It's a little foamy, but once you use this and then you put a really good moisturizer after using it, my skin is just so, so clean and it's so cheap, right? Neutrogena, you can get this at any pharmacies. As for moisturizer, I have two, which, you know, <laughs> is like the other spectrum from Neutrogena and Paula's Choice. is Sisley's Le Integral Anti-Age Day and Night Cream. This is a new uh, container and then I have the La Mer, the Moisturizing Soft Cream. I use both of this. I've had this first and then I decided to try out the La Mer and I have really, really enjoyed it. So the moisturizing soft cream is literally just like a cream texture. It's very light, lightly fragranced. I love the way this makes my skin feel immediately and then the next day it just glows. It's so good. If you are an ingredient freak, and you will check every single ingredient in this La Mer. You will be like, whoa, there's lots of chemicals in here and one of it is mineral oil. Honestly, I seem to get along with this moisturizer and whatever chemicals they have inside, it doesn't seem to do my skin any bad. So it works, my skin loves it. I look so, so hydrated in the morning. The other one that I was using before this is the Sisley. This is thicker. I love the shea butter that it has inside. One of my favorite ingredients in any kind of moisturizer. It's very rich, it's very nourishing. It's expensive. These two, expensive. But I seriously swear by them. When I finish the moisturizing soft cream, when there is a sale, ride or die, will definitely repurchase. I have repurchased this. I haven't busted it out yet because I am still using it. I want to be a little better with not having too many things open. But I'm about halfway through, so I do know that once I finish this, I will repurchase it. But I do know that I don't have to run out straight away because I have another ride or die item. But yes, these two I love and they for my skin right now because it's 
more matured. It, the lines are really more pronounced. They're really coming out. So a good rich moisturizer, especially at night, has been um, like a little miracle for my skin. I wish I knew about this earlier. This is the Clay de Peau UV Protective Cream 50 SPF. I found out about this from Michelle Wong and the moment I squeezed it out from this tube and put it on my skin, I knew that I loved, loved and loved this sunblock. It feels like moisturizer. It doesn't have any kind of weird, like sticky texture. It just feels like a moisturizer, but it is sunblock. There was one other sunblock for many years I used. It was from Lancome. They, I think it's the, it's like in a white tube. I used that for years and years and years. And then for some reason in my 20s and my 30s, I just did not like using sunblock, and which is why I have a lot of sun damage. And now I'm picking it up again, but I haven't found a sunblock that I truly, truly, really, really love. I've tried some from the drugstore, I've tried the Anessa, Anessa a little oily, but it works, but it leaves a white cast. I do enjoy it. But then when I found this, I I just absolutely fell in love. This is going this is my ride or die. I already bought two. I'm using this on a daily. I don't use sunblock on a daily, but I'm telling you, I love this so much that I am willing to use it on a daily because it's really just like a moisturizer. I'm gonna put body care and hair care in the skincare category as well. This I've talked about, so I'm not gonna go on and on about it, but this is the Karatas Cleansing Soothing Shampoo for sensitive scalp uh, dry hair. I have talked about my scalp issues for years and years now. I have very thin hair though, the camera is not picking it up, so it's kind of like thinning here. One of the problems that I have with my scalp is that I have a lot, a lot of, um, I get kind of like scaly skin, like, like almost like psoriasis, eczema along my hairline. And I think it's a little hereditary because I was observing my mom uh, in the past few months and she does have it as well. So I think I have this kind of scalp issue skin from her. But in any case, I do get little flare-ups, especially um, the week before my menses. It's not very comfortable, it's really itchy, and once it starts to flake and it gets really red and inflamed, it's very, very uncomfortable. And it over time, it has caused hair loss. But one of the shampoos that I have used so many bottles of these are like the how many these are one liter bottles i've used so many i'm almost done with this i probably have to repurchase it pretty soon it's around here now this soothes my scalp it doesn't make it even more like inflamed it doesn't have any funky thickness to it there is maybe it's the ingredient what i saw as one of the ingredients is that it has a little bit of salicylic acid so salicylic acid is a very good um kind of like a exfoliant for the scalp as well. It's not high in the ingredient list, but I believe that is helping me kind of like flick off those flicks as well and keep my scalp really, really clean and fresh and not further irritated. I'm not a person that likes to put body lotion every single night. Some nights I just feel, I don't know, I just want to be feeling very sticky. But one that I've used for years since I was a teenager is Roskin. Uh, dry skin repair or skin repair. I don't know if this is global. Um, I think in other countries, maybe it's branded differently. I know there's a brand called CeraVe in the States. I love that as well. It's kind of very similar. Maybe they are from the same maker, but different branding because it's different countries. But anyway, CeraVe is very, very similar. But in here in Asia, we have Roskin and the dry skin specialist. Oh, this is so good. It's so inexpensive. No need fancy body cream. That is just that kind of indulgence, which I talk about like self-care. It's kind of nice, but this gets the job done. Like if I am rushing, I'm just like squirt a couple and just like squirt one now like this. It's really, really light in texture. Rub it and then put it on my hands. Really light fragrance, like baby powder, but not really. It's nice. It's clean. It doesn't leave a very sticky feeling. It absorbs into the skin almost instantaneously and my skin just feels so so nourished and hydrated and it just feels protected i love to use this on my elbows my knees my shin my shins just feel look so dry and scaly from far I'm like oh you got scaly shins <laughs> so love this i just finished one bottle so this is a new bottle it's pretty yes yeah, pretty full 
and it's just my ride or die moisturizer that I yeah, I absolutely love and recommend. This could be part of a food category. Organic coconut oil. Mine, you can see it's about almost done. I use this for oil pooling and I've talked about this as well on my channel many times. So I'm not going to go through the whole oil pooling situation. But I decided to talk about this as well because I was in Scoops Whole Foods uh, in Paya Leba earlier. And there was a section where you could buy like soaps and creams and there was a kind of like a section where they were selling little little jars of stuff and they were like oil pooling uh, stuff, like specifically for oil pooling, like you would have to buy that for oil pooling. And it struck me as totally unnecessary because all you need is really good quality coconut oil very inexpensive. Oh, actually coconut has, oil has been a little bit more expensive, but you can get good quality coconut oil extra. This is like cold pressed virgin coconut oil. Take a spoon of it. You could, you, if you're not used to it, a teaspoon, but like me, I like to go with a, almost a tablespoon. Put it in your mouth, swish it for 10, 15, if you have time, 20 minutes. And I've been doing this for over five years now. And my gums are very, very healthy now because I had issues with my gums around 2017, 2018, and I have receding gums. Then I also talked about um, a little bit about myself and I used to be a little bit, you know, uh, I had a little bit of health issues. I had, why am I, why am I nervous to talk about it now? But I had a little bit of bulimia so I'm pretty sure that affected my gums as well but now in my older age <laughs> older age it is starting to show like when you're young everything heals right it's in the later stage in life in your 30s your 40s that's when all the things that you thought were okay they're starting to creep up at, at you so it, start, it started to creep up at me then I discovered oil pooling and when I had to go for like a, like a revision root canal and all that, when it was healing and all that stuff, the doctor was telling me, brush your teeth this way, do this thing, da da da, and all that, I'm taking medication. But one thing that I continued to do was oil pooling. I even asked my dentist, is it okay? And my dentist said, it's fine, as long as you still brush your teeth, it's great. And my dentist, in fact, said that after all that treatment, it was about six months of treatment and lots of money, my dentist said, look, your, actually your gums are really good. Like they're healing, they're healing well. You know, whatever you are doing now, which obviously he could, obviously could not remember, but what, what he said to me, whatever you are doing now, just keep doing it. If the way you're brushing, the way you're guggling, whatever. And I said, you know, my brushing is pretty <laughs> okay. Uh, but what I do every morning is I do oil pulling. And it has kept, I think it has really healed my gums. So I continue to do this, except for the past three months, I have been a little not so good with it because of my dear Nato. It's like the moment I wake up, she's like, get up, take me out to pee. So usually I would get up, take my time. But now I'm like, get up, brush my teeth and out the door. So it's definitely taken a little bit of time to get into a routine where she allows me to do my oil pulling. But anyway, that's a, that's a side story. This is uh, my ride or die. Coconut oil, extra virgin coconut oil. These hair accessories are my ride or die. They are from Evita Peroni or their sister brand Oyone, but they are these designs. This is the hairband that has uh, like teeth. If you are looking to like put all your hair back, if you got a lot of hair, you're gonna you know get your hair wet with uh, when you're washing your face. These are amazing. They are so comfortable. I have so many of them. I've broken a few of them as well, but they are flexible. Look at this. They're flexible. It takes a lot to break them because either you sit on them or they're really old and they're kind of like brittle. But I absolutely love these. It's so comfy. I have like pink, I have like this is, um, what is this, uh, Tiger Air Turtle Shell design, I don't know. They are so good, they come really tight when you first buy them, but because they are flexy, they will expand and it just gets really comfy, it kind of like molds on your head. If, they, if you're looking for hairbands, these are so good. And then I wear these fish clips. I don't have a lot of hair, so this will be a little bit too small for people who have a lot of hair, but they have the bigger size ones. I have so many. I have one that is, I'm using right now. This is another one. 
and I've got so many. In fact, I'm gonna place another order in like maybe tonight since I'm gonna buy <laughs> that Karatas shampoo. I'm gonna buy more of these haircuts because I kind of misplaced them all over, but ride or die because I just love clipping up my hair like this. They're so easy, look. Dum. <laughs> Little fishes come in so many cute colors. Mm. And this is one of my favorites because it has Swarovski crystals, one of the more expensive ones, but absolutely love this. These are my ride or die hair care accessories. Let's move into makeup. And I was quite surprised because I have so much makeup. I love makeup. I love just buying them, look, trying them a few times and just enjoying it. But because I like to explore my makeup, I didn't really have anything that I would say, this is ride or die, I'll run out and buy it straight away. So my collection here, which I truly feel if I don't have it or it breaks or something happens with it, I truly, truly feel I will go out and buy them. So these are legit stuff. I'm going to start off with the first thing is an eyelash curler. I have used many, okay? I've used the Surat Eye Chef eye, uh, Eyelash Curler, Kevin O'Quan. I've used some drugstore ones, but nothing beats the Shu Uemura eyelash curling. I have two of them right now. Three, actually. I have one in Malaysia. So three, because they just fit my eyeball. Now, I don't have very flat eyes. My eyes are a little bit bulgy. <laughs> so the way the curve is, it just fits perfectly into my eye. Not on the socket, but just like kind of like curving along my eye. And I don't, I never get clipped on this eyelash curler. Whereas the others like Kevin O'Quan, uh, Surat, I have also used something else, MAC. Somehow, I have always clipped my own eyelids. So, ride or die, eyelash curly from Shu Uemura. Now, you have to try it. I mean, it's a really, really personal kind of um, tool. If it doesn't work for your eye, it will not work for your eye. But because I know this works for my eye, it's just one of those ride or die. Now, you know, I got so many of them because they just work so well. The Clinique Repair Wear Intensive Lip Treatment. I talk about this often. Again, not going to go on and on about it. But this is one of my ride or die lip treatments. If, there, if I'm going for a winter holiday, if I'm going somewhere that I know it's a little chilly, there's a bit of wind factor, or I just have really, really dry lips, this saves the day. When I put this on my lips, the next day or even within like a few, like an hour, like later, my skin, my lips just feel like they have been uh, hydrated with liters of water. It heals my lips in, uh, when I get like wind, what, like wind burn when I go for a holiday. It's one of the things that I bring along for every single travel. I keep with me in my little container here. This is my Chanel. It's like my toolkit. I have a lot of things inside. I keep this with me. I bring it along because you never know when you need a really good lip balm. I have so many lipsticks. So for a ride or die lipstick for me to pick, it was very hard. So I decided to go with the formula. Of all the formulas that I've used over the years, the one that I love, it would be right or die if I could like get rid of all my lipsticks. One that I would stick to is the Chanel Rouge Coco Flash. This formula is hydrating, it is nourishing, it looks good in every color that they have. The color that I picked is Boy 54, kind of like 90s lip. I really like this color, it's just almost nothing. It makes your lips look a little bit more gray. So you got this kind of grungy, very cool girl kind of vibe. But they have so many colors. They have like reds and pinks and neutrals and dark reds as well. This is the formula that is ride or die for me. I love a more moisturizing lipstick. I'm okay with mattes, I'm okay with a bit more creamy lipsticks, but this has a very light, almost oily, but slippy texture that when you press your lips together, it just feels so comfortable. It's that slippy feeling, that it's, but it's thin at the same time. It doesn't feel like it's greasy. You know, there's some kind of slippy formulas that feels greasy. This doesn't feel greasy. This feels slippy, but in a nourishing, light way. 
so fantastic formula. I believe they have another line which is a bit more uh, thicker in the color, sorry, more pigmented in the color, not thicker in the color, more pigmented in the color. Teddy Eichel from MAC Cosmetics is my ride or die. I have used so many of these and I can tell you that I started to use this while I was in high school. When I started to explore makeup, this was one of the first few eye products that I used in my life and then the lady said Teddy and ever since then I've continued to buy the Teddy eyeliners. If you like to smudge out your eyes, which I'll also talk about one of my ride or die pencils, you just put a line and you just smudge it out. It gives this smoky effect. It's not gonna give you a sharp line like an eye liquid eyeliner, but if you're looking for something like a smokiness to it, this Teddy has a bit of sparkle to it. It's a nice brown with a bit of red. It's so, so pretty. Coming to the eyeliner, this is something that I discovered this year. Liquid eyeliner is not something that I use all the time. However, once I discovered this, I already know, ride or die. Like if I were to look for more liquid eyeliners, this is the type that I want to look for. This is the brand from Japan, Heroin Meku, the Prime Liquid Eyeliner, super waterproof. What I love about it is that it has a very, very fine, semi-firm, felt tip. It can allow me to get a very thin, sharp line that just wings out a little bit. It gives you a kind of Japanese look. The other one that I was using, which is the Tom Ford Liquid Eye Liner, which is great, but when I put it, like I give a little bit too much pressure, too much product comes out. This, no, it's very, very concentrated. It's just, just a little flick. Don't know if you can find this overseas, but I bought this from Watson's. Or was it Guardian? I think it was Watson's here in uh, Singapore. And you can find it in all these Japanese shops. But Heroin Meku makes a lot, a lot of fantastic eye products. The mascara is really good as well. It's not a ride or die for me because I don't use mascara all the time. An eyelash curler, I'll just be okay. But this, wow, I just, it's fantastic. I can be very happy with just these brushes. And let me tell you, what I'm going to show you now is just a handful of the makeup brushes that I have. But when I looked at my entire collection, I said, ride or die. Like if I lost all my makeup brushes, this would get me through. So let's start off with the biggest one. I can use this for setting powder. I can use it to also just add on a little bit of finishing powder. This is the Face One brush from Sonia G. This is the very first edition that she made. The new version comes with a slimmer handle, but this is just absolutely amazing. The book, the flat top kabuki style, the firmness of it really allows me to buff in powder when I need to, or I can just stipple a little bit to kind of take away a bit of shine. So, perfect brush. This brush, caught me by surprise and unfortunately Jaclyn Hill does not make it anymore but I actually got this from Selfridges. This is the Morphe times Jaclyn Hill JH06 brush. It's one of these fluffy, um, it's kind of like very thin and long and a bit slanted brush. This is so good for blush it can go for bronzer as well. It's goat hair, if I'm not mistaken. And because she doesn't do collaborations with Morphe anymore, you can't find this. The closest one that I found was actually from Wayne Goss. Very similar, very long, fluffy, flexible um, bristles. But again, Wayne Goss also does not do brushes anymore. So these are such good, you know, shapes. They're fluffy, they're they'll make your blush just look really nice and blended out. But yeah, I really, really like this Jaclyn Hill one. Hopefully in her new cosmetics line, she would recreate this because it's really, absolutely fantastic. If you have like a Morphe store near you, don't even know they make it still. I mean, they still have those outlets. Or you have like Ulta that still sells this. Go try it out. You will not be disappointed. In fact, if you find it, can you please text me? <laughs> this is the mini cheek brush from Sonia G. Very flat, very tiny, great for precision. I also like to use this for highlighter. If you don't want to spend this kind of money, an alternative would be the Real Techniques uh, setting brush. Similar kind of shape and 
just that this one is uh, natural and this is synthetic but it gives that kind of fluffiness this is more for setting and also a little bit of highlighting you could use this for a very very concentrated bl blush but it might be a bit more pigmented whereas this because it's definitely for cheeks it's softer and you can really buff it out and get precision work now for eyes I have these three that I love. MAC 217. I'm sure you all know this. This is the flat blending brush. I think it's one of the cult favorites <laughs> in the makeup industry. Very similar shape, okay, is the Real Techniques Base Shadow Brush. These are ones that you see me use every time I do a get ready with me or I even don't do any get ready with I get ready myself. I use these two brushes. Very nice to just put eyeshadow on your eye. You can use it to blend. You can use it to highlight on the top here. Multitasking also. I can't remember if the MAC is synthetic or it's natural but the Real Techniques one is. The only problem with the Real Techniques one, you've got to get it in a set. One more brush, MAC as well. 219. Now, if you like the MAC Teddy eyeliner, and you're wondering, oh my god, how am I gonna blend it out? This is the blender brush. This is the one that's just gonna go in the tip and just buff it out at the eyeliner here. Really blend into the eyeliner. And even though this is, I believe this is synthetic, and it's not the softest of all the brushes, but the roughness of it, like the kind of like grittiness of it, it just makes the pooling of the eye, uh, like the cream shadow, just a little bit more effective. So it's not the most comfortable, you don't want to be rubbing your eye on it, but just a little bit of blend, I think this is one of the best brushes. So yeah, I can just be happy with these few brushes in my collection and I get my whole makeup done. I was trying to look for foundation, powder, but I couldn't come up with something that I was like, ride or die, because I like to try different things. I think the one that's currently ride or die maybe is the Chanel Compact, but I I decided, you know what, I'm not going to talk about it because I don't have something that I, I would say I'm going to run out and buy because there's just so many options out there. But there was one blush that I really like, though I don't think I'll need to run out to buy them because a little bit goes a long way. It is the Westman Atelier's Baby Cheek Blush Sticks. I have two. I have the color Petal and Chouchette, uh, and that's the color that I'm using on my cheeks. It's just the convenience of it. It's the stick formula. Pop, pop, a couple of times, use my fingers and just you know, spread it all around my cheeks. If I'm lazy, I can also use it on my lips. It's the multi-function use of these make um, blush sticks that is so, so good. Like if I, when I finish this, because honestly, I don't know how I can ever finish this because there's just so much product. But if I lose it, I will definitely go out and buy. Now, do you need two of them? You don't need. So pick a color that you would use every day. The color that I'm using on my cheeks is Chouchette, and I tend to use Chouchette mostly. It's more neutral, more brown. Petal is a little bit more pinky mauve. So go for one that you can use all the time, and trust me, you get, well, for me at least, I get so much use. It's the one that I put right here on my uh, table. I'll just like wipe a couple of times, blend it out, and I'm good to go. It's the one that I use when I'm rushing for the luxury live show as well because, you know, sometimes <laughs> I didn't put any makeup on. Final item in the makeup category is more of a tool. These are the Tweezerman tweezers. They are the best tweezers out there. If you are looking to invest, and they're not really a big investment, but if you're looking for a tweezer to pluck your eyebrows, pluck your armpit hair, pluck whatever you want to pluck, get the Tweezerman tweezers. These are the slanted versions. They used to sell them at Sephora for some reason. They don't do them anymore. When I could not find my Tweezermans, I decided to buy the Sephora version, which also is in this kind of color. And let me tell you, no, no, they are not good. They do not get right into the hair and pluck them out. This one is just the precision of it. It just grips nicely and it just gets the hair and like, yes. If you pluck your eyebrows, <laughs> ride or die. Let's talk perfume very quickly. Two are my ride or die. The Petite Sherry uh, from Anik Gutal or Gutal, which is the rebranded name. Again, love, 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 love this. I think I've used this for nearly more than 10 years now. It's one of my favorite perfumes. Something or more a recent discovery is the Maison Francis Kitchen or MFK Baccarat Rouge. I like the Astra Extract version. It's just something about it that mixes with my skin so well. The chemistry just goes. I, when I wear this, I just feel like, I just feel so delicious. 
Whereas for the Petite Sherry, I just feel so girly. It's very pleasant, not offensive at all. Anybody that smells you with this will be like, what's that? It's so nice and pleasant and sweet and just girly. Ride or die, I love this. I have several bottles because now, for I don't know why, they have become so expensive. If you were to get this, I would say go for the Parfum version because the it doesn't have very long lasting power. Longevity is not there, but it's one of those perfumes that you enjoy when you just spray it on and you, it's just something about it when a person comes really up close to you, they can like, oh, there's something really nice and sweet. Let's move on to the home stuff, like kind of like everyday use things. The first, it's a detergent. <laughs> so. This is a dish detergent that I discovered maybe about three years ago. This is from one of those, what do you call them, those multi-level marketing shops? But anyway, the brand is Atomi and it's from Korea and one of these can last for quite a while. So what's so good about this is that when I used it, and I used it for the first time three years ago, I was surprised on how soft it was. Like it doesn't dry out my hands like other dish detergent does. And you can actually use this to wash vegetables as well. So it's very, very gentle. It says here, naturally derived plant-based hypoallergenic. Powerful plant-based ingredients leave your dishes sparkling clean. It does. And it's eco-friendly and you can even use it to clean fruits, vegetables, baby bottles, baby toys and child cups. It's just so good. I don't know if you can find this overseas, but I usually buy this from Shopee here in Singapore. And I get like, um, it's about $10 one, so one kilo. And I I don't go through it very quickly, but I, if you have like a big family, you're always washing dishes and all, maybe you will. But yeah, I have absolutely loved this. Uh, I have bought so many of them over the past three years and I will definitely continue to buy this brand, Atomi from Korea. If you are in Singapore, you no longer get plastic bags, you have to pay for them. So for the longest time, this was my ride or die kind of bag, uh, recycling bag. It's got these dinosaurs here. I've had this for a long time and I continue to use it. But it's one of those things that you gotta fold. You know, I gotta put it on a table. It's not difficult, but you gotta fold. You gotta lay down, right? And then you gotta roll it up. And sometimes this uh, strap that ties it all together can get pulled, right? You can get pulled and the whole thing will unravel. So this has become my ride or die recycling bag. I have several of them already. These are the Nano bag, um, ultra light shopping bag. This is the 19 liter one. And what's so good about this, this is ride or die. Like I definitely will buy lots and lots of them. It's a bag that is like this. Just a shopping grocery bag, super cute, so many colors. Got this from as a gift from Joe. It's so light, it was so tiny. If you're into the tiny bag thing, look, 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 look. It's like you can just stuff it in, no folding, no laying on the table, no little straps to fiddle around with. Just stuff it in so quick and easy and just like keep pressing it in because the material is soft, it's light, and it's very, very strong. And you get it all in, like a little bag like this, there's a little tie, zip it in, voila! And then you can flatten it out even more and it does not take a lot of space in your tiny bags. Ride or die, like if there's anything you buy in like today's video, get this, like get this. If you are into small luxury bags, this. Also something that I rave about all the time are my Dyson tools. Now this is a really old hair dryer. I also have the Dyson vacuum cleaner, ride or die. They have transformed my life. Like tr when I got the vacuum cleaner, it was life changing, okay? If you are still using one of those vacuum cleaners with the tail connected to the power socket, get yourself a cordless Dyson. It will make your house vacuuming just absolutely just change. So I don't want to talk about that. But then let's talk about this hair dryer because I know some of us are like so sick of this, but it's still ride or die. Like when this conks out, because it's a little wonky now, I've had this for a good five, a good five years, I think, and maybe more. 
maybe more. I, I, oh man, I don't know. Four, five, five, six years maybe. So it's still working really strong. It's very powerful. What's so good about it? Firstly, dry my hair, but oh my gosh, if you've got a dog, <laughs> this gets their fur dry so far. So ride or die. If I were to buy, uh, say, this Gong's out, Kong's out, and I need to buy a new one, I will still get the hair dryer and then get the other, what's the one, the straightener, the curler, the, what is it called, air wrap? <laughs> air wrap. I'll get that separately because, yes, the air wrap's great for my own hair, but for drying dog's hair, bam, so far, so good. Absolutely recommend you get yourself a Dyson. If you've been still, if you still don't have one and you're thinking, oh my God, it's such an investment, it is, but really, it dries your hair like super fast. It's just a pleasure to use as a hair dryer. Red light therapy is a ride or die, I, ride or die tool that I have uh, for me. And I think I should have put this in my skincare, but anyway, household stuff anyway, because they're all on the floor. So red light therapy, I started with this. This is the mask that I got from uh, Korea years ago. It's really like a helmet and you put it on your head, it covers your scalp a bit. So I use this for quite a bit, but it's very health, it's very big, it's very heavy, and it's bulky. Then recently I uh, received this from Current Body. I have the face and I have the neck one. Red light therapy as a ride or die item is a must. If you haven't tried it for your own skin, or your scalp, or your body, or your muscle aches, Give it a go because it's not the immediate effect. It's the constant use over time and you see the difference. Like I've always used, I mean, been using that uh, Korea mask for years and I can see that my skin heals better. What I love about this current body one is that it's just flat like this. Look, it's a piece like, like that, like a paper. <laughs> Very flexible, great to travel with as compared to this. But in any case, any kind of red light therapy that you are researching on, whether it's the one that you put on the table, whether the one that you have a panel you put a, a, along the wall and you put it on your body, it is a ride or die tool that I will always have in my uh, skincare and healthcare routine. So right now I'm just focusing on my face and my neck and also on my scalp. But maybe when I'm, I don't know, maybe when I feel like it, <laughs> I would invest in the full panel where you can put it, prop it against the wall and, and have that to recover because it also helps to recover muscle aches, joint pain, and it works. So I, I, I'm an advocate, I truly believe in red light therapy. I have only four things to talk about in the luxury fashion realm. The first is my Apple Watch. This is the Hermes Apple Watch that I got was it two years? Maybe three years ago? And it's one of my favorite watches. I don't wear any other watches. I don't wear my Cartier. I don't wear any of my luxury watches. Every time I just want to wear this, I want to clock my steps. I want to use it for my music. It's been just so good. In fact, the other day it was a little wonky and I was thinking, okay, I just need to buy a new one. So it's one item that I know as long as I'm using an iPhone, which I'm probably going to be ride or dying with an iPhone, it's, it's just so good. It's the ecosystem with the Apple, with the Apple AirPods, the iPhone, sorry, the iPhone, the Apple Watch. It's so tightly knit that it's so convenient. So anyway, I... I'm enjoying this. This is my ride or die. I will definitely be repurchasing it. Will I need to get the Hermes one? The answer is no. Will I do it anyway? I probably will. So <laughs> yes, ride or die. The second item is my hand stack. So something that I am slowly, slowly curating. So it started off with my nomination bracelet. Had that for 20 over years. And then I added the love bracelet, which I love. Then I started to add little like thin bracelets like this. They're kind of like just bangles. So I have one that's from a local jeweler, uh, just a, like one of those charms, which is actually an abacus. Then I have this very thin, very th small kind of like a diamond bracelet, tennis bracelet, uh, also from a local jeweler. And then recently I added these two bracelets, um, thin like string bracelets from Ideal Jewelry. And this is uh, lab grown diamonds. Now I just love the whole busy stack that's just kind of like a bit 
random and chaotic but at the same time add sparkle every time I move so ride or die like I think if anything happens to say my love bracelet I would replace it if anything happens to this diamond bracelet it's not too expensive I can all easily get one and then similarly with the other bracelets if anything happens to my nomination bracelet, I don't know what I'll do because this has sentimental value. I got this for my 21st birthday, so 20 years on my wrist. That's a long time for a bracelet. Definitely ride or die. I'll probably be buried with it as well. If you've been following my vlogs or my videos, you would know that this necklace stack is permanently on my neck now. The Lena necklace, which I also received from Ideal, is just... I just love it, okay? I really, really do. I wear it all the time. I wear it to sleep, to the gym, to the uh, work and everything. I just wear it, I shower, I don't take it off. And then I have this other, like sort of like a diamond solitaire necklace that I got from a local jeweler. I didn't get this from Tiffany. It was a time where I just didn't want to spend that kind of money. But this pairing, with the Lina, one stack like this, diamonds, and this one single diamond, uh, solo diamond, it's just so beautiful. I wear it with everything. Like this is just a regular top. It looks good, looks good with work, shirt, it's ride or die. Like when I, I was talk, talking about it in a in like video, I said that I almost lost it. I thought I lost it. I kind of lost it and then somebody found it. I freaked out and I contacted Ideal, I said, I don't know what to do, I need to order this, but before I placed the order, I got a call from the gym to say that, did you lose your necklace? And I was like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. But yes, I was this close to buying it back because it's, it's just one of those pendants that looks really pretty. Love the stack, ride or die stack, I will permanently wear this. Obviously, because I have so many other necklaces, I will change it out, but it's one of those stacks that I know works. It's like the core set that I have, a one diamond and then a, like a bar of diamonds. So, so pretty. Or I could just change it up with other things and it'll still look good. But I know that this stack works. It's one of my set of necklaces that I can change anytime I want to. And the final fashion item that I have, it's not a bag. It's actually these really, <laughs> oh my gosh, old tattered pair of Converse shoes. I looked at my entire shoe collection from my Hermes, my Chanel, from all my whatever, Miu Miu shoes. These actually turned out to be the ones that I would run out and buy again if anything happened to them because I wear them for going walking, traveling, I use them for the gym, I use them when I teach my class, especially weight training class. They are so comfortable, so inexpensive, and I just, oh my god, they are, actually I do need to replace them soon. But anyway, ride or die, like this has been the like if I'm talking shoe purchase, they're even better than my Orans. They're like, if my Orans, I wear them so much, I wear these, like they stick on my feet. I would say they're even better than my Echoes. So yeah, I, I maybe I surprised you. I didn't talk about any really, really luxury shoes. These are just amazing. These are really ride or die. So I, <laughs> I had to mention them. I feel like I've been talking non-stop for hours. I'm trying to look, yeah, an hour and a half. So I'm exhausted. <laughs> that was a lot of things, but I really hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to put together things that I, I, I really believe in them. If there's anything that you're interested, you could give it a go. Give me your comments as well and how it worked for you. Like I said earlier, I'm gonna make this a tag. So I'm gonna tag some of my YouTube friends. It's been a while since we did a tag video going around. So I'm gonna call it like ride or die. I'm not the first person that's creating this tag. So for the person that created this tag, tell me who you are. Creating this as a tag for our luxury community. So I hope that you will do it as well. If you enjoyed today's video, I do hope you will give it a thumbs up. Everyone, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!